So there's a big story that dropped a few days ago that I wanted to talk about here. You have Sean Combs, a.k.a. Puff Daddy, a.k.a. P. Diddy. Um, he had a number of his homes raided by the FBI, and it's because of a sex trafficking investigation. Now, this is on the heels of, remember, Cassie came out and, uh, you know, made some pretty huge allegations against Diddy. And Diddy ended up settling out of court and paying her Lord knows how many millions of dollars. But uh, now, apparently there's been an investigation going on into Diddy for a very, very long time. Because they don't raid all of your properties at the exact same time if they haven't been looking into your ass for years. And by the way, if they don't know exactly what they're looking for in these raids. So uh, I'll play this video for you. There's a local uh, Fox affiliate. I believe the houses that were raided, it's Miami, L.A., and New York. And by the way, as this was going on, some people are at the house here. I think some of his kids are at the house here. His ass ain't even there. There were reports at the time online that, oh my God, his plane took off and went to a Caribbean island. But come to find out, he actually wasn't on the plane, which then begs the question, you know, hey, what the hell was on the plane, right? But he was caught, he was like seen by TMZ pacing at the Miami airport. That's where he was during this. Okay, so now having said that, let's watch some of the raid here. You don't get much from this. Some of the people that were inside that mansion at the time that DHS or Department of Homeland Security made entry into this mansion and onto this property, and you saw the juxtaposition of these heavily armed vehicles and those very expensive luxury cars that are parked right on that driveway right there. So clearly a, a very different sight than we're used to seeing. But uh, there you see some of the people that were inside that mansion at the time of the raid. They are being talked to by investigators by people from the Department of Homeland Security. I could see they're getting their pictures taken as well. So maybe they, they don't know uh, who, you know, they're looking for or, or who they have in front of them at this point. But again, part of the process of gathering information as to who in particular was on the grounds at the time that they made entry into during this raid. So uh, if we do have a vantage point from the ground there, I'm not sure if we have a ground shot from our crew, Tony Butita and Haley yeah, Winslow. There we are. Okay, anything different from what you're seeing right now, Haley? Sandra, we're actually getting word that Sean Combs, P. Diddy, might be in New York right now, which I think probably would have thrown off the plan altogether. This was definitely very organized. There's about 30... Damn, they got the helicopters out and everything. They broke out the big guns for this. Or so law enforcement vehicles behind me, at least three Bearcats. This is the Department of Homeland Security, as well as LASD and, of course, LAPD helping patrol this area. We're in Holmby Hills off of Mapleton Drive. You saw that gorgeous home from Sky Fox uh, with Stu up there showing you that this home is registered to Bad Boy Films, which is uh, basically a subsidiary of Bad Boy Entertainment. Um, it's registered to that company, basically part of P. Diddy's company, and it's also registered to one of his daughters. I'm not going to show the video here, but... TMZ also ended up getting video from literally inside the house after the feds tore it up. And, you know, there was a, it was a mess everywhere. Clearly, they were looking for some very specific stuff. TMZ somehow got that footage. T TMZ has more informants than the CIA, as somebody astutely pointed out on Twitter. Jesus Christ, they get this stuff like this. They had that video of him at the Miami airport within like 12 seconds when this news came out. Crazy. Crazy. By the way, fun fact. P. Diddy's baby mother... Uh owned the house across the street from where I grew up. And I, we were there at the time. And P. Diddy's son, I think his name is Justin. Don't quote me on that. Um, he actually lived there. So I was like technically neighbors with Diddy's son. I literally never met them once in my life. But <laughs> but they lived across the street, which is kind of crazy. Um, look, the question every, everybody's got on their mind now, how deep does this go? And is this... Another example of like a Jeffrey Epstein style situation where Jeffrey Epstein was the CEO of Elite Sex Crimes Incorporated and he got dirt on all various politicians and, and billionaires and people with tremendous amounts of power. And is this an Epstein like situation, but for, you know, the record industry? We don't really know for sure yet, but some of these allegations are absolutely wild and we're going to go through some of the previous allegations. I mean, the laundry list of things that have been accused already on the record against Diddy are astonishing. So first, a little more on this here. CNN says, searches at Sean Diddy Combs' 
homes re- related to an ongoing sex trafficking investigation, law enforcement sources say. That's super serious. Search warrant activity at homes belong to musician and producer Sean Diddy Combs on Monday is related to an ongoing sex trafficking investigation, a law enforcement source told CNN. The source would not specify whether Combs himself was the specific target. Oh, gee, I wonder. Citing the sensitive nature of the investigation. Responding to reports of raids at homes belonged to Combs, the Department of Homeland Security Investigations New York confirmed it had executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation. Law enforcement could be seen Monday at two of Combs' homes. I think it was three. One in Miami and one in Los Angeles. Um, HSI New York said it had acted with assistance from HSI Los Angeles, HSI Miami, and local law enforcement. We will provide further information as it becomes available. HSI is the lead investigative arm of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and is responsible for investigating transnational crime and threats, including human trafficking. An HSI Miami representative told CNN, Carlos Suarez, the law enforcement action was a search warrant execution. It is not yet clear if Combs or other residents are the target of the law enforcement action. CNN has reached out to representatives uh, for Combs for comment. Okay, so this is what we know so far. A timeline of allegations against Diddy. So let's start with this here. God damn, this goes all the way back to 1990. Combs starts his music industry career as an intern at Uptown Records working under executive Andre Harrell. In 91, according to a November 2023 lawsuit, Combs and the R&B singer Aaron Hall allegedly sexually assaulted an unnamed victim and a friend after a music industry event, then beat her several days later when confronted. So we're going back to 1991 and there were already like allegations of sexual abuse and assault. More in 91, according to a November 2023 lawsuit, Combs allegedly drugs, sexually assaults, and videotapes 19-year-old Joy Dickerson after going on a date with him. So now we're in some Cosby-type territory by drugging people and taking advantage of them. In 93, after being fired from his duties at Uptown Records, Combs starts his own label, Bad Boy Records. The label grows in popularity and notoriety over the course of the decade, breaking the careers of Craig Mack, the Notorious B.I.G., Mace, The Locks, Faith Evans, and more. In 96, Combs is found guilty of criminal mischief for threatening a photographer from the New York Post with a gun. So again, track record of not only sexual abuse, but also just out-and-out violence. You can't threaten a reporter with a gun. What, you think you're going to get away with that? Which again, look, begs the question, why would he feel like he's going to get away with that? Why would he feel like he can get away with threatening a reporter with a gun? Either he's the world's biggest idiot, which is possible, Or he feels like he has protection from some sort of higher up, like he's part of a web of stuff, right? This was kind of the deal with Jeffrey Epstein. We know we know what happened, how even after he went down on some sexual abuse stuff involving kids like he still kept all of his billionaire connections and political connections and was on some bullshit house arrest thing, which was like he totally got away with the crime. Why did he feel like he could get away with things? Because he could literally get away with things, right? And. So what dirt does Diddy know where if they go after him, he could be like, hey, motherfuckers, I'm going to take down the whole house of cards, right? And then you get into the conversation of like, well, maybe they'll just off him at that point, which is what happened to Jeffrey Epstein. The official story is Jeffrey Epstein killed himself. I think the majority of the population probably believes that's not true. So I don't know. I don't know, man. There's a lot of speculation going on here, to be fair, but... God damn. We're going to get some more of the charges. 98. Combs starts throwing his annual Hamptons all-white parties that come to be known as so lavish and exclusive, he earns the rep of being a modern-day Gatsby. Guests range from music industry executives and artists to actors, real estate moguls, and sports team owners. Okay, so there was another lawsuit after Cassie. Cassie settled out of court. There was some music producer, I'm blanking on his name right now, I apologize for that, who also sued Diddy and made all, all these various charges. One of the things that was laid out is dude says, you don't understand, there's cameras in literally every room. He has cameras in every room, and he has these hedonistic parties, and he records every celebrity and singer and powerful person and industry executive. They're all recorded doing all sorts of dark stuff. And again, the allega- if it's a sex trafficking lawsuit, the real allegation is, it here is like, this is not actually consensual. Because it'd be a total violation of privacy to take people who are doing something consensually, you know, you record them, you use it as blackmail against them, like, all that is one thing. But all the implication here is, a lot of this stuff is not consensual or involves crimes like underage people in the process. So, uh, again, how deep does this go? 1999, 
Combs is arrested and charged with two felonies, second-degree assault and criminal mischief, in the beating of record executive Steve Stout, who says Combs and two bodyguards beat him with their fists, a telephone, a champagne bottle, and a chair. When Combs publicly apologizes, Stout asks for the charges to be dismissed. Combs reportedly pays Stout $500,000. The assault charge is dropped. Combs pleads guilty to the lesser charge of harassment, and he is sentenced to one day of anger management classes. Jesus Christ. 1999, Combs along with then-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez and rapper Shine, by the way, Shine has a lot of bangers, are arrested in relation to a shooting at, a, at Club New York. Combs is charged for weapons violations, but is ultimately acquitted. So this is the very famous, like, he tries to get Shine to take the fall for him, and he does. March 2000, the first season of Making the Band airs on ABC, then later MTV. The reality TV competition centers Combs as he searches for new talent to put together in a band. Running for 12 seasons total, the show later became a cultural staple for MTV, and through it, Combs created bands like Day 26, Danity Kane, All Signs of Bad Boy Records. This is just a career thing, not necessarily more allegations. In 2001, in a lawsuit, local TV host Roger Mills sues Combs, accusing him of assault, false imprisonment, false imprisonment, destruction of property, intentional infliction of emotional distress, and a civil conspiracy in an exchange where Combs' entourage roughed him up and destroyed his camera. As we have yet to be served with this complaint, we are unable to comment on specific allegations, a Combs spokesperson said in a statement. However, any claim that Mr. Combs participated in any wrongdoing is totally false. Furthermore, facilitating, facilitating the press with this baseless complaint is a blatant attempt to exploit Mr. Combs' celebrity for media attention. A jury finds in favor of Combs in 2004. In 2003, according to a December 2023 lawsuit, Combs, his former Bad Boy Records president, Harvey Pierre, and a third unidentified man allegedly gang rape an unarmed 17-year-old victim at a Manhattan recording studio. So the lawsuit was in 2023, but the incident was in 2003. By the way, a lot of this has to do with this new New York law that went into effect, where basically they removed the statute of limitations for all sex crimes for a certain period. And you, you're allowed to sue civilly, not criminally, but civilly for these things. And that's when the flow of this stuff came out. Um, 2004, Combs arrives at his annual Hamptons all-white party in possession of the Declaration of Independence, marking a new level of fortune and braggadocio for the mogul. 2005, Combs and the singer Cassie Ventura meet for the first time, and Combs expresses interest in wanting to sign her to his label. Ventura is 19 years old, and Combs is 37. In 2006, Ventura signed a 10-album deal with Bad Boy Entertainment. Her debut single, Me and You, is released, and her self-titled album drops the same year. That's a banger, by the way. According to November 2023 lawsuit, Combs' vicious cycle of abuse begins here. Ventura alleges years of physical, psychological, and emotional abuse. She claims Combs forced her to purchase and take illegal drugs like cocaine, ketamine, and ecstasy. That he filmed her as he forced her to participate in sex with male sex workers in multiple cities for his own voyeuristic pleasure in a practice he called freak-offs, and that he beat her on many occasions in retaliation for talking to other men, often with, witness, with witnesses present. In 2007, Combs becomes a marketing... I don't know if they're going to list the Kid Cudi thing in here, but Cassie says that um, Diddy was jealous because uh, Cassie was dating Kid Cudi. Or, I think, yeah, I think they were dating, or Diddy just thought they were dating or whatever, and Diddy was like, I'm going to bomb this dude's car. And then that dude's car gets bombed. And they ask Kid Cudi about this in one of the articles, and he's like, yep, all that's true. What? We got a, a car bomber casually walking the streets like nothing happened here? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Uh, in 2007, Combs becomes a marketing ambassador and stakeholder in Ciroc Vodka by beverage maker Dia Diageo. Sales of vodka skyrocket and Combs becomes synonymous with the brand. 2007, in a lawsuit, Gerald Rechnitzer alleges that Combs punched him pushed his girlfriend and tried to spit on another woman outside Teddy's nightclub at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. In a statement, Combs attorney Benjamin B Braffman says, it's just another example of an opportunist seeking to fabricate a lawsuit based on a flat-out lie to try to take advantage of Mr. Combs' celebrity status. The case is settled out of court in March 2008. The term's undisclosed. So you're going to see, I mean, this is the only argument that his legal team has to fall back on, right? You have, gee, we're already probably at like dozens of accusations, dozens of crimes, like, well, it's all just a witch hunt. Liter By the way, literally, Diddy said that. I think either he or his agent or whoever released a statement in response to the raid, and they were like, witch hunt! So is that what we're doing now? Is like every, every single celebrity, every single person who gets caught doing something horrible, are they all just going to morph into Donald Trump and call everything a witch hunt? Everything's fake news. Apparently, that's where we are now. We're in the age of deny, deny, deny on a different level. 
In 2010, in the November 2023 suit, Ventura claims all aspects of her life were controlled, either by Mr. Combs or his management company. She claims he paid for her apartment and all living expenses, and that he had access to her medical records. For instance, when Miss Ventura began experiencing memory loss, potentially due to excessive drug use and or head injuries caused by Mr. Combs' beatings, as described below, her MRI results were provided directly to Mr. Combs. Mr. Combs also repeatedly arranged for his staff to drive Miss Ventura to certain doctor's appointments. In this way, Mr. Combs exerted ownership over Miss Ventura. Jesus. Uh, how long is this fucking article? This article's never ending. 2012, in the no November 2023 suit, Ventura alleges that Combs said he was going to blow up the car of rapper Kid Cudi. We just talked about this. And he did it. <laughs> he did it. 2013, Combs launches his cable news network, Revolt TV. The network later expands into the radio, digital, and film space. By the way, in the wake of the raid, he sold all of his shares of uh, Revolt. I don't know if he did it a couple days before or a couple days after, but now he's no longer involved with uh, Revolt TV. 2015, Combs celebrates the 20th anniversary of Bad Boy Records with a box set and a, and a tour featuring the label's, the label's legacy signees. 2018, after multiple attempts to sever ties with Combs, Ventura says she met with him to have dinner and believed it was to talk of concluding her Bad Boy contract and have a discussion about concluding their relationship for good. But after the dinner, Ventura alleged he forced himself into her apartment and forcibly raped her. From November 2023 suit, soon thereafter... Miss Ventura took steps to completely separate herself from her longtime abuser, including by leaving the home that he paid for and returning the car he purchased for her. Jesus. Uh, 2022 now, Combs receives a Lifetime Achievement Award at the 2022 BET Awards and performs a medley of his hits with special guest stars during the award ceremony. My God. That's dark. Like how, how everything can just be like overlooked. All the abuse and all these problems can just be overlooked like it's nothing. Forbes report, in 2022, Forbes reports that Combs is a certified billionaire thanks to his deals with Diageo, Revolt TV, and Music Business Ventures. 2022 and 2023, in a, in a lawsuit, producer Rodney Lilrod, this is the guy I referenced earlier, uh, Rodney Lilrod Jodes, a former producer of Combs who worked with him on his latest release, the Love Album, Off the, off the Grid, alleges that the music mogul groped him repeatedly and during the duration of making the album, Combs forced Jones to solicit sex workers, take illegal drugs, and more. The suit names others close to Combs, including Combs' son, Justin Dior Combs, Jesus, and high-ranking members of Motown Records and Universal Music Group as co-defendants. Jeez, so he was trying to take down the whole shit. He was trying to go after everybody who he thought was involved. By the way, there's also video of... Cuba Gooding Jr., who often frequented these parties, these Diddy freak-off parties. Um, there's allegations against him of inappropriate conduct, sexual abuse. Like, he basically tried to, I think it was this Lil Rod guy, he tried to, like, touch his dick and do all sorts of shit. And the dude was like, I, I don't want this. And apparently Cuba Gooding Jr. has a lot of other allegations as well, and this sort of fits with the pattern of what he does. By the way, a lot, there's talks now, um, what, not Prince William, the other one, Prince Harry. He apparently was close with Diddy and showed up to a lot of the parties. He's listed in one of the lawsuits. I don't know the specific allegations made against him, but at least he was in the circle. Um, there's a lot of these celebrities who were there at all these things. Now, which ones were victims? Which ones were in on it? Which ones were aware? Um, you know, they say Diddy's mentor was Clive Davis. And Clive Davis controlled, like, most of the music industry or much of the music industry prior to Diddy's time. And he went from being a nobody at a different record company to starting his own label like that. And it was under the tutelage of Clive Davis. And th look, I, there's speculation that there was some sort of a relationship between Clive Davis and Diddy, including maybe a sexual one. And it's like he got the keys to the kingdom as a result of that. And again, video cameras in all these rooms, all these hedonistic type parties, a lot of potentially very illegal things going on. Uh, not just drug abuse, but drugging other people, underage sex stuff. Uh, we're looking at a potential situation, I'm saying it again, that could be similar to Jeffrey Epstein. That's what we're looking at. In 2023, Combs received a key to the city from New York Mayor Eric Adams. Jesus. 2023, Ventura accuses Diddy of years of sexual misconduct, harassment, sex trafficking, and rape. Ventura's allegations lasted for the entirety of their working and personal relationship. Ventura files a civil suit in New York Superior Court under the state's Adult Survivors Act. That's the law that we just talked about. Um... Combs, via his attorney, Benjamin Braffman, told the New York Times, Mr. Combs vehemently denies, blah, 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 blah. Despite with withdrawing her initial threat, Ms. Ventura has now resorted to filing a lawsuit riddled with baseless and outrageous lies. This is all the quote. They're putting this in for legal reasons, guys. They have to get, like, 
they don't want to get sued by Diddy or Bad Boys, so they're going to the lawyer to say, hey, whatever you want to say, we'll put it in the article. We got to give both sides of this thing. That's why all that stuff is in here. And of course, they deny, deny, deny. More from 2023. One day before the window for filing suits under the Adult Survivors Act is set to close, two separate lawsuits alleging misconduct in the early 1990s are filed against Combs in, in New York Superior Court, one by Joy Dickerson and the other by an unnamed plaintiff. So this is like, as we saw with Bill Cosby, as we saw with Harvey Weinstein, once that dam breaks, that dam breaks. And you go from one accuser to two to seven to 28. This, <clears throat> this is what happens. Um, Combs temporarily steps down as chairman of Revolt TV in 2023. Uh, the unnamed fourth person comes forward accusing Combs and others of gang rape in 2003. After only speaking through his attorney up until this point, Combs denies the accusations via his Instagram account, writing enough is enough. Um, we're now in uh, December 10th, 2023. In response to the accusations, 18 brands severed tie with Combs' black-owned e-commerce venture and Power Global. December 11th, the public petition. This is when, now there's actually some consequences because of the Cassie lawsuit, because of the little Rod stuff. Now, everybody's sort of taking notice and they're looking under the hood a little bit and they're going, ah, I don't want to be affiliated with this guy. Don't want to be affiliated with this guy. Um, let's see, do we have any more... So these are all the professional consequences. Do we have any more accusations? Apparently Hulu scrapped a project with him that they were going to do. 2024, representative for Combs tells the Hollywood Reporter the mogul won't be in attendance at the Grammys. He was subsequently absent from the ceremony, blah, blah, blah. Diageo and Combs resolve their legal lawsuit around marketing of products and officially end their working relationships. The fifth, the fifth assault lawsuit is filed against Combs by Rodney Lil Rod Jones. Combs' lawyer does deny the allegations. Uh, homes in Los Angeles and Miami are raided. This is what we got here, y'all. Right now, there's a lot of speculation going on. Um, let me get... Okay, let me try to steel man the Diddy perspective for a second. From What he would probably say, everything that has me doing violence is fake news, right? I mean, quite literally, did said the whole witch hunt thing. Um, I never did any violence. I never drugged anybody. I never sexually assaulted anybody. That's all fake. That's all people coming after me because of my celebrity trying to get a payday. That would be the argument he'd make on that front. As far as the other stuff goes, you know, the classic, they were all willing participants. Uh, none of them were forced to do anything at all. Uh, they could always say no. Anytime anybody did say no, you know, it was fine. Um, do we get down and get freaky? Yeah, but it is what it is. That That's how we roll, right? Like, I mean, I feel like these are the only arguments he has to even potentially make. Is I didn't do the violence, I didn't do the sexual assault, I didn't do the drugging, I didn't do the rape. Um, none of that is true, and everybody who's complaining was a willing participant, and only after the fact is basically trying to get paid. That's that's the end, he could say, there is no network or web, and it doesn't go any deeper, this is just, we did some freaky shit. Like, that's the, probably the only argument he can make, but I don't know, man. If they're looking into... Like, uh, so the the uh, sex trafficking allegations. It's like, what are the details of that? I'm sure he would say, no, these are just people who we traveled with from one state to another, and we engaged in sex when we were in those states. There was no money exchange or anything. They were of legal age. So it's not really sex trafficking, right? Like, he would probably make an argument like that. But if sex trafficking is what it more intuitively feels like, which is like they could have been underage and you took them from one place to another and did stuff with them, at that point, if they're underage, it doesn't even matter if they agreed to it. They, they don't have the ability to consent under the law, nor should they, right? So I'd like to see the specifics of, of those allegations in terms of what exactly are the claims. But again, if the feds are coming after you like this, man, they usually got the goods. 95% successful conviction rate. And I think that's a low number. I think it's actually higher than that oftentimes. So he's in a hell of a lot of trouble. And uh, I want to see how deep the rot goes. I want to see if this is a Jeffrey Epstein type situation. Or is it more like a Bill Cosby type situation where it was just him being a disgusting rapist and pervert and he got caught. But there is no more grand master plan where the web goes deeper. In the case of Epstein, I think we all know. I mean, I think the evidence points to the fact that he's Mossad, right? That he's Israeli intelligence. And he was collecting blackmail on all sorts of politicians and business people and billionaires and powerful folks. And is, is this a similar thing, but in the, in the music industry? Is that what this is? I don't know. I'll leave it up to you guys. Comment below. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now.
you know you want to.